Welcome back to Properties of Rational Exponents, and we are going to be simplifying for a little while today. Now, simplifying exponents and radicals is essentially the same thing. Remember, we can rewrite a radical as an exponent. So, in order to simplify the fifth root of 8 to the 13th, it's pretty easy if you just ask yourself this question. How many times does 5 go into 13? And we know that there are two. So 5 will go into 13 twice. So you can take out an a squared. And then that leaves you with 3 left inside. So this is the fifth root of a to the third power. That's the easiest way to simplify when you have variables that are inside of a radical to a nth root. Now if you were to think about this in a term of a factor tree. So let's pretend you did a factor tree and you went all the way down till you had all 13 of your a's. And we were to group them. So this is a fifth root. So in order to pull out an even number of these roots, we would need to circle five at a time. So I circle five a's and a comes outside. I circle five more a's and another a comes outside. But these three a's cannot evenly be taken out of the fifth root, so they have to stay inside. And that's going to leave us with a squared, fifth root of a cubed. So even if you were to go back to the old ways of simplifying radicals with a factor tree, it would still work. But it's much easier to just ask yourself, how many times does 5 go into 13? Twice, so you can pull out an a squared. And then since there's 3 left, you leave all 3 inside. So number 2, um, this is odd, so it is allowed to have a negative on the inside. So we can just go right ahead and pull out that negative. So now we have a negative fifth root of 64 a to the seventh. But again, to make this easier to simplify, why don't we rewrite 64 as 2 to the sixth power? And now a to the seventh. So how many times does 5 go into 6? It goes in once. So we can pull out a 2, but we're going to have to leave a 2 on the inside because 5 goes into 6 once with the remainder of 1. Now we can ask ourselves, how many times does 5 go into 7? It still only goes in there once, which is going to leave us with 2 on the inside. 5 goes into 7 once with the remainder of 2. And that's it. You've simplified the fifth root of negative 64, 8 to the 7th. In this next example, you are right. You are not allowed to have any radicals in the denominator. I already know what you were thinking. But we need to simplify this first. So how many times does 4 go into 4? Once. So that's just simple right there. The fourth root of x to the fourth is x. The fourth root of y to the eighth is y squared because 4 goes into 8 twice. No remainders, so there's no radicals left. So you're done with that guy. Number 4. This goes back to, are you good at working with exponents? So to simplify this, the first thing we're going to do is use our old school exponent rules. So 18 over 6 obviously just reduces to 3 over 1. And now you need to start using your properties of, well, do you have more r's on the top or bottom? Remember, this is r to the first power. So you have a full r on top and only a fourth of an r on the bottom. So there's more r's on top. So 1 minus 1 fourth is r to the 3 fourths power. Now we have an s to the 2 thirds on top. And we don't have an s in the bottom. So that's just going to say is s to the 2 thirds. And now we just have a t to the negative 3 in the denominator, which means, remember, a negative exponent just means reciprocal. So he wants to go up to the top. But when we are simplifying, we're going to want to have no fraction exponents. And most of the time, we're going to want to keep these as a radical. So now we need to manipulate some more. There is an easy way we can just simplify the 3 and the t because they don't have fraction exponents. So we can just write 3t cubed 
out front. And now, remember, you still have your r to the 3 fourths and s to the 2 thirds. So, you cannot work with these two at the same time if they have different denominators. So what we're going to do here is we're going to change those denominators to a common denominator of 12. So we're going to rewrite this as 3t cubed r to the 9 twelfths s to the 8 twelfths. Notice their fraction is still the same. They just have a common denominator of 12. So now we can write our final answer as 3t cubed 12th root of r to the 9th s to the 8th. And you are finished. That is simplified. 12 does not go into 9 or 8, so you can't reduce that radical anymore. Um, you're finished. There's nothing else you can do. Okay? So number five. This is just a bigger example of simplifying. So I'd like you to pause and try number five on your own. So this goes back to number one and two where you just ask yourself, um, can 12 be simplified by a fourth root? No, it can't. So it stays inside. How many times does 4 go into 4? Once with no remainder. How many times does 4 go into 9? Twice with one remainder. And how many times does 4 go into 14? Three times with two remainder. And that's it. You're done. So number 6. Here's a little side note for you. In order to evenly take a fifth root of 2, the exponent of 2 would have to be a 5. Okay, because then we can rewrite that as 2 to the 5 fifths, which we know is 2 to the 1st. So, the fifth root of 2 to the 5th is just 2. So, it just simplifies and goes away. That's your little side note. Because, as you see, we have a denominator that cannot be simplified. And this is not like square roots where we would just multiply the top and bottom by the square root. The only reason that worked is because you only needed two terms. So if you only had one, you're only missing one, and that was easy to work with. So the first thing I recommend doing is rewriting this as the fifth root of g squared over the fifth root of 2h to the seventh power. Now, by doing that, you'll work with just the denominator. So here's the thing. What is the current exponent of 2? 1. What is the current exponent of h? 7. Can you simplify either one of those at this moment? Yes, you can. The g cannot be simplified, so this is going to stay. The bottom, 5 goes into 7 once, so you can pull out an h. And that's everything else is going to stay inside. So you're left with 2 to the first power and h squared. Now remember what I just said in the side note. In order to take a perfect fifth root, the exponent must be 5 for both your 2 and your h. So you're going to ask yourself, how many more do I need? So how many more 2s? do you need to change that to a 2 to the 5th power? You need 4 more. So 2 to the 1st times 2 to the 4th, as you know, would be 2 to the 5th because we just add our exponents. You have 2 h's, you need 5, so how many more do you need? You need 3 more h's. So you're going to multiply the top and bottom by 2 to the 4th h cubed inside of the 5th root. And now you can just simplify. So your denominator we already have an h outside, and this is just going to simplify to h times, and then this would simplify to 2h. So your denominator is going to end up being 2h squared. But now we've got to go back and work on the top. So the top, we have a fifth root for both of these, so we are allowed to combine. We are allowed to multiply insides with insides when the um, index is the same. So we have 2 to the 4th, which we know is 16. We have g squared and h cubed, 
So we have g squared and h cubed because you cannot multiply those together. So your final answer is the fifth root of 16 g squared h cubed all over 2h squared. So again, it's a little funky, but you'll get the hang of it. This next example, number seven, is actually extremely simple. The only thing you have here is you have an x to the x y to the one third and x y to the one third. So these are, you know, the exact same terms. We just have two minus seven, so that's a negative five x y to the one third power. But when we simplify, we do not like fraction exponents, so we're just going to rewrite him as a negative five x cubed root of y. And you're done with that example. Okay? So, we only have two more examples. Number eight is just simplifying again, except for you'll probably notice that we have terms of x in front and a 6x inside. Well, this, how many times does 4 go into 5? Once. So we're going to simplify this to 6x because 4 goes into five once, and then the fourth root of 6x plus x fourth root of 6x. Just combine your like terms in front. This is 7x fourth root of 6x, and you're done. And number nine is just a throwback example two. When you raise an exponent to another exponent, you just multiply. So this is x to the square root of 18 which is x to the 3 root 2 power, and that's it. You can't do anything else with this. There's, there's no rule against having a radical as an exponent, so you're done. Again, this stuff is tricky. You need to practice simplifying with these exponents and radicals, okay? This is Longo, and I'm out. See you, bye.